Take it away. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, watching from afar. Uh, it's great to have you this afternoon. Been a slight delay to proceedings because one of the pianists was stuck in a traffic jam following a major accident. These things happen, but now we're in business and we're ready for a fantastic afternoon of piano duets of gorgeous repertoire played by uh, John Humphreys and Alan Schiller, uh, two wonderful pianists. They've been playing together for 50 years, which is an amazing achievement. I actually go further back than that because I heard Alan play when he was a boy and I was a boy, which is about 65 years ago, and it was pretty good even then. But anyway, off we go. Uh, the programme and the biogs are on our website and there'll be captions during the afternoon. But I think now we'll press on with a gorgeous afternoon's piano duo music and give a big hand to our two pianists. Can I have some applause, please? Good to see you.
the shrimp, which is not as well known as certainly not as well known as shrimp. Sorry. Sorry. Right. There you go. It's on off. It's on now. Uh, the Andantino Varies, theme and variations. Everybody knows the great fantasy, and uh, I'd be so bold as to say I think this is a greater work. Um, it's not as long as the, the fantasy, but I'll explain why, why I'm saying that in a second. So we start with a theme, a rather melancholy theme, followed by three relatively formal variations following a normal variation pattern, A, B form, each section repeated, and then... Schubert embarks on what can only be described as an absolute miracle. <clears throat> it just feels like extemporization, improvisation, almost as if the music's never been written down, as if he's in a dream world and we are lucky participants in this dream world. Of course, it is written down, but I hope we give the impression uh, that, in fact, it is of this seamless, almost endless, lyrical, dreamlike quality. Interested to know some of your reactions to it afterwards, perhaps.
Australia was a gorgeous camera this year. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like you to put it on the microphone, actually. It's very good to just say so. Are you going to talk about the mechanical clock? Well, I don't, I, I, I've never seen a mechanical clock, I don't think. Uh, it's just a mechanical organ in a, within a, a clock case, um, and which uh, was a commission. I think it was on the death of somebody, and he was commissioned to, to write this so that it would play this tune. I don't know if it was on the hour or <laughs> once a day. Um, but it, it turned out, although he hated the commission uh, and didn't want to do it, he, he produced two works for this mechanical instrument, um, some of which is some of his greatest music, really. It's some wonderful music within this particular piece. So I think that's... that's
And now the easier stuff. <laughs> well, <laughs> the Mozart, the, the, the Mozart is very difficult. It's not by, I mean, the, the work is by Mozart, but he didn't transcribe it for piano duet. I'm not sure anybody knows who did, who wrote, who did the organ transcription here? Do we know? No. We don't know. What we do know is Ravel wrote this piece. Uh, <laughs> Uh, this is an orchestral version, of course, it's very famous, and the piano, piano duet version. He wrote it for two girls. Yeah, I have made some notes here. 1910, for the, the uh, children of uh, a friend of his, Godepsky, uh, 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 Mimi and Jean, who were, believe it or not, six and seven years old. Whether they played it at that age, I don't know. Um, are the movements down there? Do you have the movements on the yeah. program? Okay. Uh, it really, in this music, this is a case of less equaling, equaling more. Uh, the texture is often very light, very thin. I wouldn't say threadbare, but just very light. Uh, but the, the, the harmonies and the textures and the sonorities are just out of this world. I think it's almost our favorite work for Penny Duet. Every time we come to it, we just we fall in love again with it <laughs> and with each other, perhaps. And uh, <laughs> they, and. The last movement is absolutely spectacular. And I think in a sense it has almost more presence on the piano than it does in full orchestra because the music's so contained here within this one instrument as to as being spread over a larger musical landscape. And the move from pianissimo in this qu quiet chorale-like melody to this spectacular display of glissando fireworks at the end is unforgettable. I hope, so, I hope you think so anyway. <laughs>
knew you'd, I knew you'd bring me the microphone. I'm not half as um, well educated musically as my colleague. He's much more fluent when it comes to telling people about works. There's very little really to say about these pieces that you're my co you're my colleague. Yeah, yeah. Uh, about these three pieces, which you may well have heard orchestrated, Borjak orchestrated them. And these are three of the more popular ones, I would say, of his set. They're not actually um, based totally on folk tunes. They are sort of just the elements of folk music from Bohemia, which he used. I thought I would just say a very quick word. I don't know if John told you how we first came together. Did you tell the... Sort of, but no. Sort of, because I, I remember playing in Stevenage with the... Uh, Alberni String Quartet. I think it was the Schumann Piano Quintet we played, and John wrote a, a very, very uh, effusive article for the local rag, and I thought, this chap knows what he's talking about. So when, when he asked me if I'd like to play some duets with him, I concurred. And uh, the rest is history, really. We've been mainly... Uh, playing in this country. We did have a foray into Iceland on two occasions. Uh, and we did cross the Atlantic twice on the old QE2. The um, second voyage I remember to particularly because it was in a Force 10 gale. <laughs> and uh, as we were playing, I could hear John groaning. And, sort of, uh, 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 and I thought, well, I'm not playing that so badly. It's not, I'm not playing. I thought he was having a go at me. Uh, but it turned out at the end when we were standing and he was holding on to the piano and I was holding on to him as we took a bow. And then he raced to the cabin and was violently ill. So although that was not the highlight of our the playing together, it's certainly the most memorable moment. I think we spent most of our time drinking on the boat, didn't we, actually? Well, you speak for yourself. <laughs>
a, a very short work, which is sort of for Lendler by Schubert, and they run into each other, uh, and the first one is repeated. So there's sort of like five Lendler, really. One times two. <laughs> Since it's a fairly light-hearted occasion, can I tell a little story about the Lendler anyway? Okay. It's, 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 not, it's, not against, it's not against him. I once played a recital when I played for Lendler of Schubert, solo Lendler, I mean not piano duet, followed by the big B-flat sonata. And the four Lendler ran together like these ones do, with no break between them. And at the end of the four Lendler, I thought there was no applause, and I thought, God, was it that bad? Um, so I just carried on and played on with the first movement of the Schubert, which is very long. There was a lot of applause at the end of that, and I thought, my God, is it that good? And <laughs> afterwards, a guy comes back to me and he says, I love the Lendler, but I thought the last one was rather long.
thought you were going to say something. <laughs> well, I am. I am going to say how wonderful it was. I'm going to embarrass you. I can see your 50 years experience has stood you in good stead because that was masterly playing the whole afternoon with all the varied repertoire, gorgeous repertoire, all beautifully characterised and classy playing throughout. And they make it sound easy. That's a, that's the secret of being really good at it because it's very hard duet playing and they're masters so it was absolutely wonderful thank you both for coming you'll be even better in another 50 years <laughs> 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 and it's been a lovely afternoon really has thank you both for coming from bristol and from uh, birmingham but the third person's not on the platform i don't know why where is she because actually turning for piano duets is a nightmare. Anyone who's done it will tell you that. So she deserves a special round of applause. Would you like to? <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. If you've enjoyed it from afar, please considering, uh, consider going to our website and donating something, because we do pay our musicians Unusual though that might sound, we actually pay our musicians and we don't get paid. It all goes to the musicians, so please give generously via our PayPal facility. It's very easy to get rid of your money on our PayPal facility, so please do so. Thank you very much for being with us. There is no concert on Tuesday of this week. Uh, we did have a piano trio fix, but they all live in central London, and there is a tube strike and a rail strike, and there's no possible way they can get here. So there's no concert on Tuesday. We're back to business on Thursday and uh, as from then on. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you very much to Rob Jenkins upstairs for doing all the recording, for Jill Rowley doing box office here, and uh, thank you for being with us on a lovely afternoon. Uh, Life-enhancing piano duets always is, but it's been especially good today. Thank you for being with us and a very good afternoon to you. <laughs>